Hi everyone. Well, we are well over a year of lockdown now in uh, various stages around the world. People opening up, people closing down, people reopening and thinking it's over and then we're getting on with with more lockdowns and more close downs. But we keep going and we keep working as much as we can and keep your interests up. That's the biggest thing, you know, do the things that, that bring you joy even when you're in a situation where maybe work's not going right or you know home life is crowded whatever it happens to be anyway i haven't put out um another longhand video for a while so i want to do one now and um, one of the questions that i was asked some time ago after i'd done some victorian styles was about the edwardian period and so what I want to do now is a few videos and I'll be using mannequins because obviously uh, right now uh, using live models is, um, is not appropriate. But I'll be using some mannequins and going through this very um, ornate and elaborate period of just a 10 year period after Victoria passed away with her son Edward coming onto the throne after waiting over 60 years. And um, what that did to hair, how it looked, uh, the terms that were used and also as I always do talking about how you can use today's tools to get those looks so it's not just about what was done then exact it's like if you're doing a play now if you're working on a movie and you haven't got those exact tools or implements how can you get those looks uh, now but still talking about how and why they were done at the time so I'm going to give you a little bit of history and then we'll move forward from there the Edwardian period lasted from 1901 to 1910. Britain and America still looked to Paris for the latest fashions. Long hair was piled high on the head in Gibsons and chignons, and hair pieces were used to fill the hair out for the inordinately large hats that came into this period. Let's look at this period in detail and some of the hairdos that were done at the time. Hello there, and here we go, uh, continuing with um, our looks from the Edwardian period. Now, uh, with some of my videos before, um, again, thank you for liking and also leaving your comments. And there was, um, like, like many people are enjoying the idea of working with today's tools. A couple of people said it would be nice to see the exact things used at different periods, whether it's Victorian, Elizabethan, Roman. Uh, but obviously, uh, if you're working on a local play or if you're just doing something for yourself or just interested, the tools that you have around you really are more today unless you're a collector. And even then you can only go back so far and then some of the things would be totally illegal these days as well. So what I tend to do with this work is work with the tools around us, uh, but to give you the look and the feel of a period. So I'll continue to do that, but if you want to make any comments, um, please do and, and I'll answer as and when I can. Um, again, we're in a COVID period, so I'm working with my mannequins. Um, so what I'll be doing is rather than turning the chair around with a model, um, I'll be turning the mannequins uh, so that you can see what we're doing a little bit clearer. During this period, Edwardian period, you know, um, from 1901, crowned in 1902, through just to after the, um, the well, no, yeah, the beginning of the uh, First World War. So um, he actually passed away in 1910, but the war started in 1914. Obviously it takes a few years to things to move along. And the austerity of a war will always change fashion for clothes as well as hair and everything that goes along with it. So we're starting today. We've got a long head uh, mannequin here. I haven't done any pre-dressing with it. It's just natural uh, because what we're gonna do is um, a top knot uh, which could be known as a cottage loaf. It leads into um, the more ornate Gibson looks. Um, Gibson's, the Gibson look came from Charles Gibson, who was an American illustrator um, at the turn of the century. And what he did was basically design this uh, female form, a uh, beautiful face, downward sliding brows and eyes with this piled hair on top which emulated the sort of things that we were seeing from Paris, etc. anyway, but it gave a very American feel to it and it became a look that a lot of people wanted to emulate. It was like the ideal woman for the time, same as that sort of hourglass figure. 
Um, but what we're going to do now, as I say, is the cottage loaf, the top knot, the same idea as that, but in a much more simpli simplified form. I've started, um, and again, using modern tools so that you can get this done quite quickly if you need to, um, but I've started by just sectioning the hair off. So this will just fall over the face for now. But what I've got, or what we have here, is the natural hair falling down. And what I've done is I've circled through the center. So what I've done is I've taken the parting through the center and I've just created from just around between um, the temple, I mean, sorry, the crown and the occipital bone, um, a line. So we just created a circle through and make sure you leave enough through the front and the top because you want this top knot to show, but you want to have enough hair to pull around. At this time, same as Victorian times and many other times, there were pieces used to fill out if someone had very fine hair. Um, the word for hair pieces at the time, which was very elegant, was transformations. So transformations were used um, in many forms, and I'll be going through some of those now and in other videos with you. And should you want me to show you how to, um, to make some of those for today or how to use the uh, tools and things that are out there, even in the local chemists or pharmacies now that you can put together to create those looks, let me know and I'll maybe do a little individual video on just making hair pieces up with the things that we have around us for today. But right now we're going to work by just putting a little back combing into this hair to get some lift. So I'm going to separate through the front first. Just going to lift that hair up and pop a little back combing down at the root. I go to the section behind. And again, just pop some back combing into the root, comb through the hair first. Obviously you don't want tangles at the end, you just want them in the base. Now as you're working through, if you want to use a little bit of hairspray, uh, by all means do, just to give it that extra little bit of body. You don't need a lot, just something that you can work with. And also, should you want to set this first, but I'm showing you how it can be done just from your own natural hair, then obviously put the elastic through the center to separate that area. Then just pop some hot rollers or regular rollers around the edge, just rolling towards the uh, shape that you're going to eventually create. And if you're using a regular roller um, that isn't heated, you can wander around the house, you can do whatever you want to do, and then take those out. Uh, I would suggest if you're doing that, use a little bit of spray or something, because obviously you want to make sure um, that they hold their shape if you're gonna leave them in for a bit. If you're using hot rollers, again, either use a bit of spray before you start or just move ahead and um, pop the hot rollers in do what you need to do and then you can take them out all they're going to do is like any um, roller or setting is going to guide the hair in the direction that you want it to go into but we're just going to continue through here and quite quickly just build up a little bit of body into the ends of this hair. Back combing has always been around, like everything else, but through each period of history, it gives itself a different name. Um, and the same with um, with the the idea of transformations, which I think is lovely for wigs or m mainly hair pieces, because. Um, they're just small pieces or areas that could be done with um, fringes or filling out back areas, side areas. As we mentioned and as I'll show in more videos moving forward, during this period um, hair got very wide. The Edwardian period was not about the hair being piled so much on top, it was much more about the width of the hair um, and the hats uh, moved along with that and so 
the circumference of the interior of a hat at that time rather than fitting the head shape was actually much wider if you put it on now it would probably fall down over your eyes you wouldn't be able to see because it, it was held up um, by the hairstyle um, any transformations that happened to be in there and then also um, the hat pins that uh, then were put through the hat into the hair and that held it into place so it really was um, quite an interesting uh, period for this um, large sort of hair creations and at the time they were called pompadours I mean that had come from a couple of centuries before um, and basically it was just a um, another version of that but for this period um, whenever you go throughout history with clothes or hair you always find references moving back um, and it's just the way it is i mean it's the, it's the way with everything if you think about it even music i mean when you hear something people go oh that sounds like this piece or that classic piece and it's actually a modern piece of music but obviously you're not inventing new notes you're just inventing new sounds um, and, and new ways of putting them together Okay, what I'm doing now is with this centerpiece that we'd separated, I'm just gonna twist that, put a couple of pins in just to hold it out of the way, um, and then I can move forward with the rest of the shape. So now we've got this um, sort of Phyllis Diller look about it. Um, if anybody remembers who that is, great American comedian. Um, so I'm going to now start by brushing through one side of the hair and again, if your hairs fly away, if you're doing this on your own, or if you're doing it uh, on someone where the hairs fly away, you can use a bit of spray if you need to, just to stop it from getting tangled. Work with the hair from where it's growing. So I don't want to pull this too far back. I want to make sure that I fill out all the areas that I need to. And remember, we're gonna work from the end. So as we work up, it'll loosen off anyway, which is important for that period. I'm gonna, as always, which I've told you before, if you don't need the hair, don't work with it. Don't fiddle around and get yourself all tied in knots. Get rid of that hair, tuck it into the hair. It'll just become padding. If it falls out like that, it doesn't matter. You can either start again or just tuck it in. It's, as I say, there's never a panic unless you make it a panic. So we're bringing that up to the top. And what we're doing is we're bringing it to that area that's got the elastic on the top, that ponytail. That gives you an instant area to pin into. We're gonna use um, modern bobby pins because we just want to go inside there, not on the very end, but inside that shape and just pin one pin just to secure that shape. Then I can move to the back and I can put another pin over the top just to hold that in place. Okay. And if anything falls, don't worry, remember you've got the rest of the shape to do as well. But I just want to secure that. All I'm, all I'm doing is securing the back area of that shape. So again, bobby pin, pop that in, and that will just hold that for now. So it's a very loose sort of shape, and that's exactly what you want. We'll come into the front. Again, I'll pull this forward. I'll get my brush. Come down. Make sure you've got all the hair from underneath and make sure the very underneath has got a smoothness to it. The inside obviously is where you want to keep that back combing. Putting that across, rolling up and then bringing that to the area of the elastic again and then you can loosen it with your fingers once you've got it, the shape in you can manipulate that 
and keep it as soft as you want. I'm going to take another pin, open the pin with my finger and place that into the area. And now I'll start to bring these together. So now I can just comb over these, bring them together, and then through the, the two areas, I can pop another bobby pin to hold the areas together at the back. I want some looseness to this. It's meant to look almost like it's been thrown up, you know, sort of put up quite quickly but you know that the security is there. At this time as well, you would find um, if someone, or you can, you can buy false fringe or you can make false fringe, but people have fringes and they were done by taking a pin, like a regular hair pin. Let's see if I can find one on my tray here. So taking a hair pin, just a very fine pin, and then the hair was wrapped around, backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards, and then pressed with a little bit of heat. And what you got was frizz rather than um, curl. And it was a very popular look at the time. So now we'll move around to the opposite side. You can see now all our back combing in there. We'll take the second side and we're just gonna repeat. I just get this, I'll just move that out the way a little bit. So if you have ponytail at the top's in the way, just clip it out the way. Again, grab my brush. I'm gonna brush a bit of this back combing out from the inside, but really my main thing is just to make sure that this outside edge is nice and smooth. And again, lose what you don't need. So just get that out the way, and then you can bring it up to where you want. Then, once you've got it up there, now you can play and just soften it off. You can see that sloping up, that's, that's good. You want that. You want that look of looseness into this. I'm gonna come back to the two sides. Pull them together. Don't overcomb, you know, from, don't, well, you can, I mean, you've got back combing in there, but you don't want to destroy your shape. You just want to work it in just so that it feels secure. And you can tell that by lifting, it should feel firm. But you can quite quickly start to, to build that shape up. Okay, so now we're moving into the back. And again, I can take this in three areas. Smooth that hair out. Wrap it around itself. Bring it up to the top, tuck any of that extra hair in that you don't need. You're gonna bring it up, then you're going to play around to get those together. You're gonna to grab a pin and then pin through. And use a couple of pins, you know, into the elasticated, just the outside of the circle of the elasticated area, just so that you know that it's, uh, it's secure and feeling firm. And again, if I want an extra pin, then you just put it in. Once you've got this up, because you've got a secure area to, to move it into, you can really play around with it as much as you want to, to get the shape you want. We're gonna move around again. 
get the ponytail out of the way. And I can work this in two, or I can work this just together. It really depends on the volume of hair that you have on the person that you're doing. So I'll try this in one. If I don't like it, then no harm done. I'll just take it back down again. Okay, so you bring it up, and as I said before, like bring it up, and it'll be quite tight. And then you start to loosen off and bring it to where you want it to be. Always into the same area around where we've separated that so that you've got somewhere to anchor it because that's really what you're doing. You're anchoring into the firm area at the top. So now I've done that in one. Again, you can do it in one, you can do it in two, you can do it in five. I mean, it really is up to you. What you're doing is just bringing it up to where you need it to be. You're controlling the image of how the hair is going to look and what sort of width you have to the shape. It's interesting how these shapes, like any fashion, start to accumulate and add and another hairdresser adds a little bit of a touch another hairdresser adds a little bit of a touch the fashion at the time starts uh, falling in line the hair falls in line and then everything starts to take on um, either more elaborateness or in some cases throughout history um, more softness um, less elaboration to the looks it really just it just depend on the time Okay, now we have our center with all these nice little slightly offset shapes all coming into it. If you wanted everything completely even, you can. To me, that's more of a 1940s look where the rolls were very precise and, and very even. This um, has a feeling of, of being uh, like just thrown up and, and there, but it, it really is quite elegant. Okay, so with the top now, we're just bringing that piece uh, that we elasticated and now I'm backcombing. Uh, but as you can see with this, rather than just backcombing at the root, um, I'm backcombing into the whole shape. Now I'll bring that together. I'll pop a little spray on. And I'm just smoothing this out. Again, you would have seen me do this on other videos um, because what it does is it increases um, the volume of hair that you have across your hands and it gives you more to work with, which you'll see uh, me doing in a minute. So once you've got that nice and smooth all the way over, all I'm going to do now is with my comb, and my hand, I'm going to turn, so I'm using the palm of my hand, I'm turning the hair and I'm bringing it up over the area through the center. I'm going to bring this around itself through the top and in fact let me turn it this way and you can see it's got layers in it, that's fine. All we're doing is securing it. Now, you saw me do it with my palm and now I've turned my hand. So now my fingers are free, my thumb's inside, and I'm just gonna grab one of those um, Victorian Edwardian clips. And again, you can just use a bobby pin, you don't have to use these, but I'm using this. I'm gonna pop that in, just one there, so now I can let go. And now I'm gonna bring this hair round and drop it down, see where I think it looks nice. Get another one of those pins. 
Secure the back. Turn. More ends. Let's bring them round. Another clip, clip. And then we just continue that round. Bringing that shape into place. And giving it that rough, but I think sort of, it's got a, it's got a classiness to it because today people don't do this with their hair. But if you look at this, because it's uneven, it's got that every day going to the kitchen or, or maybe going out shopping, you know, I mean, it's not unelegant, but it's not like some of the, the other do's that we, we um, have created where they're extremely um, smart with everything all in place. This has a feeling of looseness, and yet the whole hair is very solidly formed. And you have this lovely whirl um, in the top where the chignon moves into that soft sort of shape. All this is very secure, very solid, uh, because we pinned into the elasticated ponytail. Um, but then when we got into that area, we just swirled it round, used the old fashioned clips to sort of hold it in place. You can even have them showing. I mean, you could have them further up into this area as well, just so that they're standing out and uh, being seen. Could this be dressed more? Absolutely. I mean. You know, with, with larger combs uh, or even um, pearls and things which were used later, you could put these all the way around and really dress this up. But it is a very um, common little look uh, for the time. And um, it just uh, elevates that sort of Edwardian feeling of hair, but in a very nice, natural way. Uh, and a nice easy way to start moving into this type of hairdo. So again, um, I try and explain a lot. Some, somebody once <laughs> spoke too much, but I don't know how you can explain something if you don't talk. So um, if you're with me on my channel, you're gonna hear me talk. Um, but this is a nice easy um, blending. Um, I've also got the video on Edwardian uh, children, which is like uh, anything from uh, youth to 16, 17, uh, when their hair was more braided. Um, that is another simple video which we'll, you'll find here. Um, look, don't forget to leave your comments, um, like if you enjoyed it. And um, what I'll do is I'll be coming back and doing some more looks, but with more elaboration and more transformations. And again, if you want to know anything about like doing them with today's tools and the things that you have around you, scraps of hair um, and different things, um, I can you know sit down and uh, go through some of that stuff as well. But anyway, I hope you like this um, little Gibson, this little Edwardian hairstyle. Nice and easy, simple to do, because it's just two steps with the ponytail through the center and then rolling uh, through the sides. If you set it first, you'll find it maybe a little bit easier if you haven't done it before. But otherwise, I think, you know, just give yourself a little bit of time and this should work out quite well. Hope you like it. Thanks.